wanted to briefly to acknowledge the over two decades of history uh, that HUD has had with Chicago House, providing HIV funding through the Hopwood program to both this facility as well as over some 100 scattered site units as well. As Stan mentioned, I am joined today by Ray Willis, who is the CPD director for Illinois. Ray and his team has worked tirelessly with Stan and this group over the decades here, so we are really proud of that partnership. Ray, could you stu please stand and be acknowledged? Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Now, as many of you know, and I reminded the secretary this morning on a senior team call with him that in November of 2011, uh, he became the first presidential cabinet secretary uh, to speak at a trans event when he partnered with Myra and her National Center for Transgender Equality speaking at their uh, annual dinners award. And the president, I'm sorry, the secretary sent his regards. Now, here at HUD, we realize the importance of this Trans Life Center, its housing, and its programs. And we applaud Chicago House for once again for stepping up to the plate. Now, this year, through the assistance of the AIDS Foundation of Chicago, Chicago House has, has been awarded a grant that will support the operational cost here at Trans Life Center. Now, HUD is committed under this president, this secretary, this leadership team to providing guidance and oversight that are responsive to the needs of the people affected by AIDS. And again, I applaud Chicago House on your great work, and we are excited to watch the success of this new Trans Life Center. Thank you very much. So earlier I said that I had two, uh, three groups to, enter, uh, to th give special thanks to uh, being Clune Construction and Designs for Dignity. And the third is Mara Kiesling. Um, Mara is a national hero um, in, th in the fight for trans equality and for trans services. Um, we needed a mentor who helped us as we planned all of this and Mara has been with us. She toured this place when it looked horrible with me and she flew in from DC for this. Um, this is the woman who President Obama calls when he needs advice on trans issues. So Mara, it's a thrill to have you here and welcome. Good afternoon, I'm Mara. Um, last Friday afternoon, I was speaking to about 12 interns at the Victory Fund in Washington, D.C., and we opened it up for questions. And, it, it, and, and the first question I got was, with, with all the bad stuff that happens, when you hear about people being murdered, when you hear about bad stuff, how do, how do you keep going? I, he didn't mean how do I keep going, but how does one keep going, and how could he keep going? He says, it's amazing, 21-year-old, gender non-conforming, undocumented immigrant activist. And, um, and I told him about the moments when you get it, when, when, when you, you feel like you can keep going. And, and it's moments like this, when you, know, when you know all of the people who are about to be really helped. Um, we know that everybody sometimes needs help. Sometimes people need legal help. They're going to be able to get it here. Sometimes they need medical help. They're going to be able to get it here. Sometimes they need employment help and they're gonna be able to get it here. And then sometimes they need a place to be, they need a place to live, they need shelter, and they're going to be able to get it here. We did a survey several years ago called the National Transgender Discrimination Survey where we interviewed 6,500 trans people. And we saw three primary things from that. I, I could go on about the data forever. It, it, our cross tabs literally stacked six feet because they did them wrong. But <laughs> they were six feet tall. But, but the three things you need to understand is that it's, it's really as bad as we always thought. Second, every aspect of society is implicated in it. Employers won't give trans people a, a shot sometimes. It's, it's getting better. Doctors won't give trans people a shot sometimes, but it's getting better. And everybody won't give us a shot. The police won't give us a shot. Judges won't give us a shot. But it's all, it's all getting better. So we saw that. It's bad. Every aspect of, of society is implicated. But the third point is one that I really, really feel I have to talk about every time. 
When you add racism on top of that, trans people have it even worse. If you have to face racism and you have to face being transgender, it's so much worse. And we know that. We, we in our community talk a lot about the people who are murdered. And, and what we know about them is it's not trans people like me who are middle class and white and have a job and middle aged. It tends to be young trans women of color who are immigrants. Maybe they're sex workers. And all of those things together in the United States make you less safe. And when you're all of those things, you're less safe. And when you're all of those things, you're welcome. You're welcome here at the Trans Life Center. And that's an amazing thing. Good things are happening all over the country. We've seen some really, really amazingly good things in the last couple of weeks and some bad things. The bad things are the Voting Rights Act went down, uh, or, or the, 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 some important parts of it. And that really, really matters to trans people. It really, really matters to civil rights. And, and we saw a justice system not work the way it should this past weekend. Again, implicating profiling and racism and some other things. And it's been a rough couple weeks, but it's been a good couple weeks too. The Social Security Administration, um, after seven years of work, now allows trans people to change the gender marker on their Social Security account. This is a big deal. If you're trans, you know it. This is a big deal for getting a job, for opening a bank account, for buying a drink at a bar. Um, this matters a lot about who you are. And things are getting better, but people still need help, and they're going to be able to get help here. All over the country, we're seeing legal clinics sprout up for trans people. There's one in Ithaca, New York. There's several in Los Angeles. There, there's one in Charlotte. There's one in Washington, D.C. Medical clinics are popping up everywhere. Advocacy is just going crazy in a really good way, and, and so much is getting done. And job Job programs are happening in lots of different places, but I am so excited about what's happening here at Chicago House at the Trans Life Center because it's going to be where you live. It's going to be, it's going to be services you need where you need them. And it's not enough to solve the problem by any means, but real people are going to get real help and it's going to save real lives. And I, I just want to say one last thing to, to the folks who may become clients or, or residents here. If you want to give back, understand how amazing this is. Understanding what an amazing gift this is from all of the people Stan just named. And understand that if you want to be really amazing in your life, you have to be amazed. You have to be thankful and you have to be amazed. And, and, and ask for help. Get help. And then give help back. Um, be amazing. Be amazed. And I am so, so proud to be here today. So thank you very much.